The village of Donnachmore in Tyrone is home to a fine but somewhat neglected example of one of Ireland's early Christian monuments, the High Cross. The local historical society wanted to produce a booklet about the cross with the aim of stimulating interest and sustaining it for future generations. Local student Owen Boyle took up the challenge and created a comprehensive publication. I grew up not too far from the village and had walked past the, the cross many times and I was always fascinated by it. But there was a certain amount of mystery about it too because I didn't know what it was about when it was commissioned, um, who built it and what the individual carvings on it meant. So I, I jumped at the chance. Pat O'Neill very generously supplied a lot of information that the Historical Society had collected over the years. Producing this book has uh, motivated a lot of the people and uh, it has given a big interest and has brought a lot of people to the village. The first challenge was to filter the information, make it accessible uh, for the public. And the second was to do a bit more research on the context, on what was happening in Ireland and Europe at that time and how the cross fits into that. The crosses themselves, all Irish High Crosses are really their works of poetry. And each individual carving and each individual scene is put there for a reason. Really what I found out was that an awful lot of the carvings and a lot, a lot of the symbolism on, on, of it are influenced by different cultural aspects that have been absorbed into Christianity as it came, swooped in from the Middle East to Western Europe on the back of the Roman Empire. It had always been known that Romulus and Remus were on the High Cross. Rome was the centre for the Christian Church. Opposite Romulus and Remus, there's, there's a boar, a Celtic symbol for fertility. It's there on the High Cross to show the fertility of the Christian religion at that time. On the back of the cross, there's a depiction of Cain slaying Abel, but there's a figure on the right with no legs, and it is thought that that is Abel's soul. The pagan religion in Ireland believed that this world and the next were somehow connected. And so you see a perfect example of the two cultures mixing together. The detective work of these projects is genuinely addictive. You become very driven. Seeing things from your ancestors' eyes is also incredibly fascinating. I was a complete surprise to find that in actual fact, people in Donnock Moor eh, over a thousand years ago were aware of different cultures and what you really learn from, from it is that human behaviour hasn't changed, um, it's just technology has changed. Heritage is who we are, it's part of our human condition and allows us to reflect on our perspectives on history and on our society and to become better people. It's also incredibly interesting, incredibly enjoyable um, and incredibly rewarding.